My name is Daniel Bushell. Fourth, second, First Amendment stop. The Boston bombing, what you aren't being told. Coming up. New laws passed while you were distracted. Who's really behind terrorism? And why the revolution will not be televised. Track coach Alistair Stevenson's been in hundreds of marathons. Before and during this race, there's bomb drills for the first time. Scores of private security contractors wired to command centers. Yet it's the first time there's been an explosion. The witness was shocked at FBI denying a bomb threat or even that a drill took place oh when it was regularly being announced on the loudspeakers. There was um, police spotters or uh, there was people on the roof with, with binoculars looking down onto the athlete's village at the start. There was dogs with their handlers going around sniffing for explosives and, and we were told on a um, loud announcement that we shouldn't be concerned if this was just a drill. Every false flag in recent memory has been accompanied by a staged drill. In the middle of the drill, an actual bombing or other attack is carried out. The Justice Department admits terrorists and victims are played by volunteers and actors. The format is highly effective because patsies who are going to be blamed are simply told you're participating in a drill. Before the blast, authorities warn of a controlled explosion near the finish line. Standing by the finish line, but leaving just before the explosion, professional killers Craft International, wired up to FBI command. On their caps, front and back, Craft's logo and slogan, violence does solve problems. After the explosion, the Craft backpack is missing. It looks identical to the exploded one, down to the white square on top. The suspect's ones aren't even the same colours. Here's the city commissioner calling Zanayev's actors before correcting himself. We're confident that these were the two actors, these were the two individuals that were carrying out uh, this mission. Intelligence author James Fetzer calls this the most amateurish false flag. The official suspect shot given to media, hundreds of readers note, is horrendously photoshopped. A leg with no body, a ghost in the background, and many other discrepancies. They also note this is how Patsy's right. This will be the last message before the police get me. I never done it. They set me up. Father, please forgive me. I am sorry it has come to this. The FBI says the boy ran over his brother, but witnesses confirm this is him being escorted by police and the chilling sight witnesses saw next. We saw the first suspect get hit by a police SUV, and then after he was hit, shot multiple times. Politicians and media are already using the incident to call for more interference from Chechnya to the Middle East. Let's speak to James Corbett of the Corbett Report. Thanks for coming on. In whose interest is another invasion? Certainly, this is not, I think, in the interest of the American people. Is it in the interest of the, the political class that, that uh, as we say, benefits from these types of attacks and uh, gets them to extend their, their powers and authorities over their own citizens and the excuse to go into the Caucasus region? Absolutely. It's almost impossible to find a military uh, engagement that America has been involved in since that time that it ha hasn't in some way provocateured or used false pretexts to get the American public on board with. So I think we have to be extremely wary of these types of incidents, especially when they're used as a political uh, a political rallying cry, um, just as the USS Maine was. They had the uh, remember the Maine uh, to hell with Spain. And I think um, I, I would be very surprised if there weren't people in the Pentagon working on uh, words to rhyme with Chechnya. An investigation finds the FBI practically behind every so-called terrorist plot in the United States. Agents find someone poor enough to bribe and set the plot up for them from start to finish. In one case, the judge said, what occurred here is that a government created acts of terrorism out of a man's bravado and then made those fantasies come true. I suspect that real terrorists would not have bothered themselves with a person who was so utterly inept. Here's the FBI praised for stopping what it says was full ground war against the United States. Unfortunately, because of the fine work of law enforcement, these men were unable to advance their deadly plot. A dreadful potential catastrophe averted and clearly Government wouldn't bother to hold a press conference if this were not a major step in the war on terror, right? All right, so good night, everybody, and, oh, I'm sorry, uh, questions. Did the uh, 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 man have any actual contact with any members of al-Qaeda that you know of? Any... Yeah. The, the, answer to that, the answer to that is no.
How did you find, did you find any explosives, weapons? No, and, and, you, and you raise a, a good point. You do raise a good point, uh, that point being that these deadly international terrorists had very slyly disguised themselves as a bunch of dip living in a warehouse. Let's talk to Dr. Kevin Barrett, author of Questioning the War on Terror. Thanks a lot for joining us. How does the system work? The FBI approaches gullible and sometimes even mentally retarded or homeless people on the fringes of the Islamic community and gives them uh, a plot and says, hey, we're going to try to, you know, and once they approach these homeless people in Florida and said, we want to blow up the Sears Tower, could you help us? Here's $50,000 to go buy boots. And naturally, these homeless people accepted $50,000 to go buy boots, and so they were arrested for terrorism. They do need to kill a few people every now and then to keep the war on terror going, to keep their budgets flowing. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it would be a mistake uh, when some of this live ammunition that the FBI regularly gives happens to go off. Of course, all terrorists are Muslims, except the 94% who aren't. Most terrorism in the States is actually white extremists and, above all, freedom fighters in Puerto Rico, colonized after the USSS main false flag. The reason you never hear about them is media has been told not to report it or the other bigger causes of death. The National Safety Council points out even bee stings or slipping in the bathtub are more deadly. Yet $5 trillion is being spent in the so-called war on terror against Muslims killing thousands of soldiers. Dr. Barrett, is there a better way to spend that $5 trillion? Well, sure, of course. I mean, you know, you're much more likely as an American to die in your bathtub from drowning or to be hit by lightning than to be killed by terrorists. So if they really cared about your life, they would declare a war on bathtub. We lose a 9-11's worth of people uh, from tobacco every two to three days here in the U.S., and we lose a 9-11's worth of people from automobile accidents uh, every 28 days. So, I mean, these are the real threats to life and limb. All terrorism is not even a statistically significant threat. And Muslims commit 6% of the terrorism in the U.S. Uh, extremist Jews commit 7%. So actually, Jewish extremists are ahead of Muslims in terrorism here. But you never read about that in the newspapers, because guess who owns the newspapers? <laughs> yeah, why are false flags so effective? Humans don't mostly don't want to uh, engage in aggression against other humans. I mean, just as, as dogs will stop uh, uh, attacking another dog if that dog gives a sign of surrender, uh, humans are wired to fight viciously in their own defense, in the defense of their families and their communities, but not to go out and fight equally viciously in an aggressive raid for that reason. Unscrupulous rulers who want to convince their people to engage in aggression need to convince their people that they are the ones who are under attack. Under attack, Americans are by troops. The Pentagon has suspended America's historic posse comitatus law, which banned troops being used against US civilians. Tanks are for the first time on the streets of America, and Black Hawks with Hellfire laser guided missiles on lawns. Citizens forced out their homes by soldiers, but wall to wall troops didn't find the suspect. Man went out to smoke and accidentally found him in the garden. But drones over Boston are now a great idea, says Police Commissioner Ed Davis. Former Marine Corps Officer Professor James Fetzler, thanks a lot for joining us. What do you make of all this? The use of the military and uh, a martial law version on a city historically known for its liberalism where the vision of uh, military forces going door to door without warrants of these uh, weapons uh, and, and vehicles in the streets of Boston, that was one of its major objectives, and it bodes very ill for the future. Just as people were being forced out their homes, the House was ripping up the Fourth Amendment. The rush through CISPA bill now permits invasion of privacy without warrant. Departing Congressman Ron Paul. Big Brother writ large, cutting the resources of private industry to work for the nefarious purpose of spying on the American people. And that was the plan all along, says the leak on the day of the drill. Warning, laws being written to screw you. I work on a security commission. They're going to pin this event on a male late teens to early 20s. They're going to say he used powder for the explosion and it shouldn't be for sale. They won't find the suspect till later this week, and the raid is issued to occur on Friday. This was a staged event. The event was planned. On Friday, the raid occurred as predicted, and that same day, the Senate brought in legislation to regulate gunpowder. 
Let's speak to StoryLeaks' Anthony Gucciardi. You've interviewed witnesses and military intel about this. What do you think of the moves? The major explosive materials are common. I mean, you can explode flour if you want to. You can ex explode pretty much anything and make it a weapon. We've seen that before. But yeah, they're using it to go after this agenda to restrict certain freedoms. I mean, let's, let's put it like this. I'm not a super gun crazy guy. No no question. But if they're they manage to take away the second amendment, then they can take away the first amendment as well, which is freedom of speech, and they can take away the fourth amendment. And no one's talking about them. It's a complete media blackout. You will not be able to stay home, brother, because the revolution will not be televised. People say they're more afraid of the government after this attack than terrorists. Millions have gone online angry over the military precedent. Look, they're everywhere. Look up the street, they're like all, all up there, too. Jesus. But mainstream networks aren't allowing a single discussion of troops rifling through homes, preparation for new wars, and martial law in America. This is the truth seeker.